my name is Natalie Bartholo and today I'm going to show you a tutorial on how to make toilet paper food sculpture out of, you heard me, toilet paper. Alright, so obviously the first thing you're going to need, some toilet paper. This is what we used um, and it estimates to be about one roll per student, roughly. So here's some cool things that you can make with the toilet paper. So a sandwich here, a salad, make chicken nuggets, lunch meat, corn dog, bacon, donuts, burger, burrito, pasta. There are so many different options. The kids get really creative and there's no limit as to what you can make. Your toilet paper is going to want to go back to its natural state, which is flat. So you're really going to have to be patient with the toilet paper and allow it to dry in the shape that you want it to so that it can hold its form. So wait, what does that mean? After you get the toilet paper to the shape you desire, let it sit for at least 24 hours. It will only stay that way once it sits and dries fully. This project uses a lot of patience and time. This is not only the first time I've taught this lesson, but also the first time I've ever done it myself. The biggest thing I learned is that it's totally different than sculpting with a clay-like material. Instead of it immediately holding its shape, you have to be patient and gently form it and then allow it to dry for at least 24 hours. This worked great for me because we have block schedules and I see my kids every other day, so it allowed them to dry. However, if you don't have a block schedule, you might need to accommodate. Another thing that came in handy in this project was using these takeout containers. I cut them in half and then each student got one half. I actually saved these ones for later in the project when we used temper paint and then they were able to mix and use it as a palette. You could ask your lunch ladies if they have any available or you could very easily purchase them through a school magazine, catalog, or you could even ask your community for donations. All right, tip number three, all about paint. All of the tutorials I watched said to use watercolor. However, I noticed that watercolor only worked well for certain things, like vegetables that have high water content, fried rice, lunch meat, cheeses, and pasta. Temper paint worked well for things that you wanted to be a little bit more opaque. So fried foods, desserts, burgers, bread, wings, and then vegetables like carrots, celery, and broccoli, since they are more saturated with color. All right, tip number five, this is gonna help you with the finances. These dry with a matte finish, so make sure that you have things like Mod Podge, acrylic paint, and epoxy. These will help it to look more realistic. It is, however, going to add up the cost of your lesson. So my advice is be prepared and set aside materials designated for this lesson only. And don't be afraid to ask students to bring in little items such as sprinkles. Adding Elmer's glue to the acrylic paint can also help extend the paint and also make it more fluid. Make sure the sculptures are dry before adding sauce, gravy, or other toppings. Another trick is that you can lightly brush on Elmer's glue and add pepper, sprinkles, or other toppings. Tip number five is my favorite. I love watching the kids bring in their own accessories, boxes, plates, cups, and it really just makes the project come to life. And it shows them that presentation is just as important as the rest of the project. If you're interested in more resources, check out my TPT page at Artful Resources. Thank you so much for joining and I hope you guys have lots of fun creating this in your own classroom.